prayer on tonight. Amen. God is a, is a good God, and we're grateful to him for blessing us to be alive, to be above ground, and to be in the sanctuary one more, one more time. Amen. And uh, we just praise God's holy and righteous name. I'm going to ask if you would uh, join us tonight by standing with us and taking our Bibles, and let's go um, over to the book of Philippians chapter number three on tonight, and we thank God for those who who joined uh, the church in prayer as we were asking God to uh, uh, let there be favor, amen, in the Lord's house, amen. We want God's favor, amen, not only just in our individual lives, but we want God's favor, amen, in our, in, inside of the church house, amen. We want the Lord's favor, his, his grace. He just tips the scales, amen, in your favor, odds are against you. But things still go your way. Amen. He works all things uh, together uh, for our good. Amen. We're just certainly grateful to the Lord for his many, many wonderful blessings. Philippians chapter number three tonight. We're going to dive right into this uh, lesson on tonight. Uh, Philippians chapter number three uh, here on tonight. And we're going to look at verse number 13 and verse number uh, 14 for our for our devotional uh, reading here on tonight, Philippians chapter number three, uh, verse uh, verse number thirteen, and then verse number fourteen. And I encourage you, whatever translation you have, you want to read that aloud to our uh, those that have joined us online. We thank God for you, Amen, as well. And then the New International Version is the version of my preference that I'll be reading from. But whatever version you have, read that with confidence. Fast readers will slow down and slow readers will speed, speed up. Amen. And we'll all get to our conclusion together. Philippians chapter number three uh, here on tonight and we'll begin there at verse number 13. Shall we, shall we commence? Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Let's take our Bibles, our electronic devices that contains um, our copy of God's uh, holy word and repeat our statement of faith tonight after me. Um, this is my Bible. I believe what it says. I can have what it says I can have. I can be what it says I can be, and I can do what it says I can do. Amen. Tonight, you may be seated. Amen. Very present to the Lord. We're certainly grateful to God. Uh, thank uh, uh, tonight for being uh, present uh, here on this evening. Uh, we're certainly grateful uh, for, for, for our Bible study uh, session here on this evening. We're grateful. Last week, we had... Uh, uh, one of our very own minister, uh, Delcy Frankson, and sometimes, again, I you know, tell people, you know, sometimes you can be so close to greatness and you don't even recognize it, uh, but she uh, led us on last week as this month, our emphasis uh, is uh, elevating our emotions, elevating our emotions, and um, we tapped into her expertise on last week, and um, I got a chance to, I was kind of cheating. I was uh, in service, but I had uh, I had my earplugs in, and I was I was watching St. John while I was uh, at the state convention, and uh, you know people somebody said something to me, and I was like the little kid, I was like, huh? I was like, what? Huh? What? But I because I was I was I was I was focused, I was I was physically there, but my mind, Amen, was 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 here on home, and so uh, we thank God for. Uh, for her in leading our lesson on last week. And so would you just indulge me by just giving a hand clap of praise and thanking God for her last week. And so uh, first Sunday, I got a chance to introduce this, um, this message about, about being resilient. And, um, um, and, and that's, that's really what I'm going to focus on these last two Sundays in preaching um, in the month of April, I want to build on that some more in preaching. Um, you know, it's kind of like, you know, they tell you you can't eat out of everyone's kitchen. You go to different kitchens, eventually your stomach, unless you got a 
stomach kind of like a tank and you could just go and eat everywhere. Uh, but uh, you can't just eat everybody's food. You say rice is rice. No, you just can't go eating everywhere. You know, uh, <laughs> can't go eating everywhere. No, no, no. Amen. And so, uh, and so, uh, wanna wanna you know we paused last Sunday um, as as uh, Reverend Harper presented uh, an international effort of evangelism uh, that we want to launch into and. Um, but I want to pick back up on this in teaching, as well as in as well as in preaching, uh, the next couple of Sundays, and the whole idea of behind this saints of God is that you can elevate your emotions through being resilient, through being through being resilient, through being resilient, and so uh, tonight I want to lift up. I won't be before you very long on this evening, but I want to lift up before you tonight, um, you know, in that passage of scripture where Paul talks about, he says, this one thing I do, he says, forgetting those things which are behind, forgetting those things which are behind. Now, again, that, that word resilient, it could have negative connotations and positive connotations. Negatively, um, when you think about being resilient, uh, you think about uh, being resistant or resisting, and, and uh, especially when you start talking about change and growth, and people are, you know, I'm resilient, I'm resilient. Some people are resilient to growth. Some people are resilient to change, you know. In fact, sometimes you hear it uh, within the, church they used to sing that song um, we shall I shall not be moved and uh, and they some people really really mean that you know um, if they could say it with Ebonics the they'll tell you I ain't going to be moved you know and so so in some degrees so so to some degree when you start talking about being resilient it, it pulls on a negative, has that negative connotation to it. But then the other side of that negative connotation um, is a positive connotation of resilient. I'll give you an analogy and then we'll jump on our handout as we move further here tonight. You know, here in South Florida, there are not a lot of trees that could stand living in South Florida. We live in, we live in the, the, the subtropical, this tropical environment. You know, there's a pipe price and a penalty to pay for living in paradise without having to jump on an airplane. And one of those penalties, I know some of you are thinking about humidity, uh, but but one of those penalties beyond humidity is um, is we have what is known as a hurricane season, and and not all trees can survive hurricanes but if you if you look at those native trees to South Florida um, you know palm trees um, storm could come and storm can blow other trees fall down fall over but you perhaps can count on your hand the number of times that palm trees have have blown over I don't know how true this is, it, this is but it, it sounded good to me um, to talk about how the tree must have been designed to have some levels of flexibility within it, to handle the strength of the winds. Um, so while other trees are strong and firm, you know, oak trees, you know, they do quite well in the winter and up north. We have some oak trees here, um, you, but you start being stiff and just rigid um, and the wind begin to blow and you have no levels of flexibility, um, then it'll just take and could eventually take your stiffness, the entire tree, its branches, its trunk and its roots and then blow it over. And so, but, 
But when we look at these palm trees, I don't care how tall they are, slim they are, they, they just seem, you know, they just seem to weather storms. That is another form of being, of being resilient. That is another form of being resilient. That's the positive connotation of resilience. Is, is, is to be able to, to survive the worst, to, to be able to recoil, to be able to bounce back, to be able um, to stand or still be standing after everything that you've gone through. This is a, this is a trait, brothers and sisters, that I feel um, that I feel that would be a blessing to us as believers, you know, because life we are going to, we're going to experience some things in life, and, you know, and, and if you haven't, please give me the address to the planet in which you live on, um, that I might travel there so that I might not have ups and downs. Um, but we will experience these different challenges in life, and, and one of the things that will help us because, because uh, our experiences will have influence um, as it pertains to our emotions. We'll be mad, angry, disappointed, all of these various uh, emotions that we could have um, in life um, are, are, are influenced by things that we experience in life. And uh, if we're not careful, the things that can, the things that affect us if we're not careful, they can infect us if we're not careful. Um, and since those things that, that can affect us possesses the potential to infect us, um, then we, wanna, we want to know um, how it is that we can be resilient. And so Paul says one of the ways um, that I'm, I've mastered this is that he says I've learned how to Forget those things which are mine. Let's look at our handout real quick right here. Um, um, a couple of the um, definitions that I gave you in the beginning of that. Resilience is possessing the aptitude to withstand difficult conditions. And, and when you are resilient, you recover quickly from difficult conditions. When life takes and bends you out of shape, if you are resilient, you possess the capacity to recoil and spring back into shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being resilient is having the faculty to recover. None of those definitions suggest that you won't get bent out of shape. You won't get stretched beyond normalities. These things will happen to the saved and the unsaved. However, brothers and sisters, uh, we, we as children of God, we're not like everybody else. It's, you know, because of what's on the inside of us, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we, will, we will be touched by these things, affected by life, circumstances and conditions, um, yet never uh, because, because of what lives on the inside of us, we possess the, the ability to be resilient. So y'all hear me get here. Um, let's look at, let's look at uh, Proverbs chapter 24 and verse number 16 tonight. Proverbs 24 um, and verse 16 here on tonight. Proverbs 24 and verse number 16. We can get an individual reader um, here on tonight, amen, that'll read that for us. Someone would read that for us. Y'all bashful, oh, we got a hand down front here, amen. Y'all bashful tonight. If the baby could read, she'd read it. I had a baby, the, I had a baby the other week, she read for us, amen. She, she was like, y'all grown folks won't read? She says, give me that mic, amen. Come on, Brother Nix. For though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again, but the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. Amen. So when calamity comes in our lives, the 
Bible says, you know, when the righteous fall, you know, he, he gets back up again. When the wicked experience calamity, you know, if I could just translate that, it's over. That's the end of it. Amen. Um, and we want to, we, you know, we as Christians, you know, again, there's something on the Holy Spirit on the inside of us enables us to be resilient. Amen. Amen. And, uh, there's, there's much you could, you could, you can get into even um, ethnic issues and ethnic circles and talk about different things that different ethnicities have experienced. But, but from this theological perspective, as Christians, regardless of the hue of our skin, um, it says the righteous, the righteous may fall. Seven times, it says, just given a number of eternity, more than just seven times. But when we fall, because of what's in us, we get back up again. We get back up, we go back to that job. You know, we go, we go, we go, we go back to that family. We go, we go, we go back. Church, we, we go back. We we take we take before Jaws of Bunny, if I could take and paint, use that as an imagery for some of y'all that's trying to grasp it. Uh, they talk about that bunny just keep going and going and going. That's us. That's us. That's us. Because of the spirit in us. We get back up. But those that don't have the Lord on their side, when calamity hits, that's over. That's over. It's over. And then the context I like of that scripture, the context of it, it's, it's, it's within the context of calamity. And so it's, it's suggesting that the, it's calamity that has caused the righteous to fall, which also would mean that when calamity happens, we need not be amazed when it does happen. When calamity happens, when trouble happens in our lives, we need not lose our mind. Um, it will happen. Yeah. As a pastor scripture says, brethren, brethren, I'm thinking not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to which is to try you as though some strange thing has occurred or some strange thing has happened. The news is, is that because you belong to him. He will give you the power to get back up again. Amen, somebody. Let's go over to 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a great observation. That's a great observation. Great observation. Right. So, so let me try and repeat that so that others can hear it. Uh, um, and, and I was, I was when I was in um, the state convention, um, there was time where people in the con uh, congregation would speak, and I couldn't hear what they were saying. And I was like, huh? And the people around me was like, what did you say? I was saying no, I, but I was saying huh because I couldn't hear the folks here. So, so. Um, so Sister Brenda says that there are degrees to the types of falls. And in, in there being degrees, some things you can bounce back quickly from. While yet there are others that take some time. That's a great observation. But the good news in it all is that we rise again. No matter the length of time. And so, yes, so she is 100% right. There's some things, um, there's certain, some things, you know, we can, you know, it's a next day type of situation. And there are some things, it may take a year. But we get up again. We rise again. Don't die in the process. Don't give up in the process. Um, and there's something you know, and, 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 and later on in the handout, you know, I just share with you that it, in the midst of this, you know, we have to, we must, we must trust God. Trust God. Trust. You, know, you know, 
that whole letting go, learning how to let go and leave the past in the past, boy, it, it involves trusting God. That means if, if it's a quick bounce back or if a year bounce back, quick bounce backs kind of fool us and, and deceive us and we think that's all us. You know, it, you know, yeah, you know, you know, we, I, I, I did, I, you know, I got on back up off of this here. But, but sometimes God says, okay, that's okay, all right. I will allow you to have that. But I'm going to show you that whether it was a quick or it was a long duration, I'm going to show you that you need me in it all. And it's, it's, when, it's when the longer the duration, that's when we, you know, we're calling on his name uh, much more. You have the highs, the lows. You have the I'm through, I'm done. Um, I'm, I don't want to pray no more. I can't sing no more. And then you go run back to God. You run away from God. You're going to roller coaster with God and the roller coaster with your emotions. And then when he brings you out and you look back and you say, you know what? That, that, was, that was not me. That was all God. That was all God. That was not me. That was all God. And, 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 and we begin to recognize, you know, God. And so here's another passage of Scripture, 2 second, uh, second Corinthians chapter number 4. And let's look at verse number 8 uh, through verse number, verse number 10. Uh, amen. Uh, do we have 8, eight through 9? Oh, we got to read already? 8 through 9. Yes, yes. Sir. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed amen and so paul talks about you know this gift that's in us and uh, then he describes all of these different uh circumstances and you know situations you know crushed and perplexed despair these are things that can happen when you go through whatever it is you may experience in life. All of us, saved and unsaved, will experience these things. But I, but I love that. Give me those texts again, um, Brother Quinn, if you will. But, but I love this because what he's doing is he's talking to the believers, and as he is talking to the believers, he's letting you know that although we may be hard-pressed, he, he says on every side, but here it is, because we belong to the Lord, because of his spirit dwells in us, he says, we're not crushed. Do y'all see that? It's, I mean, it's, it's life and the situations, leave it up there, it's, it's, it's pressing you in. It's pre the walls and circumstances. It feels like the world, not just the room is getting smaller, but it's just so much pressure burdens you are carrying seems to be just pushing you down. You went into the doctor last time you was 5'11", now they tell you like 4 feet 5. You feel that way because of the burdens you're carrying. But what he reminds us is, is that we're not crushed. He says, and then mentally, 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 you're perplexed, you're confused. You can't figure it out. One plus one should equal two, but it doesn't flow like as such. And, and you're, you're perplexed, you're confused behind that. Then he says, but you're not in despair. Not in despair. Because although we may not know the future, our faith says we know who holds the future. That's what not being in despair is. Not being in despair says, um, and we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, those who are the call according to his purpose. That's what not being in despair. We have a hope um, like none other have here on this planet. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Go to that ninth verse there. Go to that ninth verse. And then he talks about persecuted. So you're going to have some times in your life you know, we all, you know, a lot of us, I think we, we carelessly uh, say this, you know, haters, I have haters, I have haters, I have haters. Uh, we just, you know, that is, that, I don't, that became a buzzword before COVID and within, within, uh, within Christendom. Uh, we just, we rolled that into the ground uh, because it's, it's going to be a whole lot of haters 
that's going to get saved, and, and then what you're going to say. Uh, but might have gone out, amen. We do find ourselves uh, being persecuted, persecuted. But he says, in the midst of being persecuted, we are not abandoned. God never leaves us alone. Sometimes, you know, we, I, you know, I might not be able to go to Mix. I might not be able to go to Woodard. I may not be able to go to Frankston. I might not be able to go to any of you. You may not be able to go to the people that are close to you. But the good news is, is that God says you can come to me. And then what I found is that sometimes you go to folks and then they go to their folks. <laughs> Y'all not talking to me tonight. <laughs> but the good news is when you go to God, it stays there. Could it be in our lives? Sometimes we find ourselves going to too many people and we go to too many people which contributes to the difficulty of letting go of whatever went on in your past. Two of folks that know, because they'll be holding on to stuff and you ready to let it go. They still hold it. No, 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 you can't do that. Can't do that. You can't do that. Why can't I do that? Got to learn how, we got to learn the fact that, listen, we may be persecuted, but we're not abandoned. God is always with us, struck down in our lives, but then we're not destroyed. Those, those are beautiful, beautiful things and testimonies testimonies about us as Christians. Listen, let me, let me move us further here. I want to go to looking at, I encourage you to read um, the other material there on that handout, but I want to take us to, um, to, to just give us eight, um, I wanted to give us eight, uh, some, just some fundamentals. This is not exhaustive, um, and so, so, so please don't judge, but these, this is not exhaustive, but at least eight fundamental things um, that I feel you know, through looking at scripture that can help us, brothers and sisters, in leaving the past behind, leaving the past in the past, and learning how to let go, and learning how to let go. Um, the first thing, the first thing is, uh, don't hold, don't hold, y'all can hear me? Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Um, the first thing is, don't hold on to what God has delivered you from. All right, write that. And when you keep driving and you just pull in real quick and you just change the tires. <laughs> yeah, the pit stop. Yeah, we did. Amen. No, thank you all. Amen. And so um, you don't don't hold on to what God has delivered you from, to what God has delivered you from. Um, th there is a danger, saints of God, there's a danger. There's a danger in holding on to what God is setting you free from. There's a danger in holding on to what God is setting you free from. Let's go over to the, the uh, Old Testament book of Genesis chapter 19. And... Um, we want to look at two verses there. Uh, Genesis chapter 19, we want to look at. And uh, we want to look at verse number 17, and we want to look there at verse, verse number 26. Genesis chapter 19, and we want to look at verse number 17 and verse number 26. And uh, we'll need two readers to read, uh, one reader rather, if you can. Genesis chapter 19. Amen. Verse number, verse number 17, 19th chapter, 19th chapter, verse 17, and then verse number 20, verse number 26. Amen. We have a, we have a hand up. All right. Yeah, we have a hand up. All right. Genesis chapter 19, verse 17, and then verse number 26. Now he's, he's a little bit, he had to, he's, so you, you got to have it on your own device there. Amen. All right, there we go. Gen Genesis chapter 19, verse 17, and verse number 26. As soon as he had brought them. Who 
see me. Hello? Yeah, we, I can hear you. They need you to preach tonight. You're going to have to preach. <laughs> All of that preaching you be doing at home, and you pro- making them affirmations about yourself, you be at home hollering, I am the head and not the tail. I'm above. Amen. I, need to, I need to get that Amen. from you tonight. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. As soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, flee for your lives. Mm-hmm. Don't look back and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. All right. Go to verse 26. But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Amen. And so this is that that episode, that infamous episode uh, for you, uh, for those of us who have not dropped out of Sunday school, we remember um, that um, uh, that that the angels came and visited um, Sodom and Gomorrah and, and uh, told Lot and his family to flee. That 17th verse key word in there, you have to listen to the entirety of when you're given a command and make sure you follow it to, 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 to his exactness. And it said, one of the commands there said um, to them, King James Version, it says, escape and don't look back. And uh, when they when they left, when they fled, uh, the Bible then says in that 26 verse that unfortunately his wife, she looked back. Brothers and sisters, I, I bring that up to show us that, listen, when God is delivering you from something, when God is setting you free from something, you must escape and not look back. Amen. There was a danger. There was a danger. Um, to looking back, brothers and sisters, and holding on to what God has delivered you from. Um, Number two, number two, um, don't dwell. Don't dwell on the past. Don't dwell on the past. Um, Dwelling, I mean, living there, ruminating there, staying there. How do you do this? You keep talking about it, talking about it, thinking about dwelling, dwelling. Don't, don't, don't keep rehearsing the story over and over and over and over again because every time you tell and retell and retell and retell stories, um, in, 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 in some instances, you just keep giving life um, to what God has already put death to. This is power in our tongue. The power of life and the power of death in our, t- in our tongue. So if you, keep, if you keep rehearsing it and you rehearse it from this place of pain, this place of, 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 of vic- being the victim and victimized, okay, how many years ago in your past that whatever has occurred, guess what? You're going to still be a victim 10, 20 years later. So don't dwell there. Don't dwell there. Let's look at some text on this piece right here real quickly. Let's go to Isaiah 43, um, verse 18, um, 18 through 19. I think I gave you the wrong, I gave you the wrong thing up there, Quinn. But Isaiah 43, verses 18 and verse 19, 18 and 19, uh, 18 and 19. Isaiah 43, verse 18 and verse number 19. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Verse 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Leave verse 19, st- really like verse 19, stay up there. So he's saying in this desolate place, in this desolate place, he says, um, first of all, if, you, if, you, if you're dwelling on your past, you won't be able to perceive the new thing that I'm doing. God says, I'm doing a new thing. He said, you, you, you don't see it, you can't perceive it, don't see it. In the wilderness, places where you thought there was no way, God says, I'm making ways. Places where you expect for there to be no water, God says, there's going to be water. 
Strings, in fact. <laughs> this is the power of our God and what he is able to do. But the question is, can you no longer dwell on your past? You can't dwell on our past. You can't dwell on our past. Let's look at um, Luke 9 and 62. Luke 9 and 62. Luke 9 chapter and verse number 62. Uh, we get a reader that could read that for us. Luke 9 and verse number 62 uh, here, on, here on tonight. Uh, amen. Y'all awfully bashful tonight. Y'all saying, Rev, I can't, I can't turn my Bible that fast. Luke 9, I'm Luke's uh, 9 chapter, verse 62. Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. So even in our Christian walk, there is, there is this teaching um, that, listen, you, you, can't be, you can't be with hands to the plow and looking back. You can't be hands to the plow and looking back. Because even in even saying so, he says that, listen, you can't put your hands to the plow and keep looking back because if you do so, you're not fit for the kingdom. Are y'all in here on tonight? Um, let's go to Proverbs 4, 25 through 27. Proverbs chapter 4, verse uh, 25 through 27. Proverbs 4 and verse 25 through 27. Do we have a reader uh, here on tonight? Reverend Woodard has his hand up. Proverbs chapter 4, 25 through 27. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. Amen. And so it, it look, at, look at what Paul says um, in conjunction with that Proverbs text. Um, he gives this imagery as a runner who has, who has sprinted ahead of the pack. He sprinted ahead of the pack and he says, he says, I'm forgetting what is behind and I'm straining forward to what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Jesus Christ. And so it gives imagery for you af athletes in the house and those who have children that are in athletics and they, are, they, are, they, run, um, they run races. Um, they, they'll tell you, and I've, I've never been a sprinter, I've never um, been a runner, uh, but they'll tell you, when you, when you, you lose speed, when you start looking back, to see where those who are chasing behind you, where they're at in the race. As opposed to just looking for it. I've, I've seen, you know, I, I like football. I've seen some football folks mess up. They, you know, in technology, they be running, looking up at the um, scoreboard. And somebody come and run, tackle them. Keep your eye on the goal. Cross the finish line. You can't be distracted by what is behind you. Do y'all hear what I'm saying in here on tonight? Um, let's, let's, let's go further. Number three here, number three here tonight, um, and kind of mentioned this one a little earlier. You have to place your trust in the Lord. Leaving the past in the past, and letting go, you have to place your trust in the Lord. Why is this important? Because th there is a human need um, that all of us have, and this, this human need of certainty. No one likes uncertainty. There is a human need that all of us have. I don't care what your DNA is, your zip code is, your background is. All of us share one thing uh, in common, and all of us crave for certainty. We don't like uncertainty. No one likes uncertainty. 
don't like inconsistency in the church. You don't like inconsistency in your life, inconsistency on your job. No one likes that. We like certainty. And so since we like certainty, um, one thing, even, even if the past is negative, we, at least we know that. We are certain about that. Um, then there's the fear of letting go, the fear of uh, if you were wrong, someone not uh, being met out with punishment, the fear of well, what's going to happen, the fear, you know, we have the uncertainty of tomorrow. And so hence we must put our trust in the Lord. Church out trust in the Lord. You can write this text down. We won't go there. Proverbs 3 and 5. Proverbs 3 and 5. That's one of those, another one of those uh, texts. I'm not throwing shade for those of us that did not drop out of Sunday school. Remember that. You know, put your trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. But then I'll tell you another reason why we must trust in him. Let's go to Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. This is another text that we'll find that sometimes is very popular uh, that, we, that we can recall and we can, we, can, we can rest on and we can quote. Uh, we get a reader to read that for us here on tonight. Get a reader that to read that. Jeremiah 29 and 11 here on tonight. Yeah, give it to us again, sis. Yes. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. When we, we have to trust that, that, that God has a plan and the plans that God has for my life, your life, our lives, the life of the church, his plans not to harm us, there's a plans to, to hope, plans to future, plans to prosper us. You have to trust that God has this for us. Do y'all hear me in here on tonight? Uh, look at Psalms 94 and verse number 19. Psalms 94 and verse number 19. Get a reader? Yes. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. Amen. And so, so in life, you know, that uncertainty happens, you know, we can all get levels of anxiety. And some others, some more than others, but we can all have some levels of anxiety because we just don't know. We don't, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know. Anxiety to come can come and it can creep in. But then it says to us um, that when, when anxiety comes in, it says that your consolation, um, your consolation, it comforts me or it, it, it quells, you know, my fear, my anxiety. Y'all hear me in here on tonight. Amen. Amen. Let's go further. Um, number four, um, you need to know that you are a new creature. Know that you are a new creature. Second um, Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. You, you are a new creature. You're a new creature. You, 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 you can let the past go. You can leave the past in the past. Um, you, you, it's easy to let go because guess what? I, I'm not the same that I was yesterday. You're not the same that you were yesterday. We all are growing and maturing in the Lord. If you're trusting in him and you really have turned your life over to him, we all are growing and maturing in God. We're getting better day by day. You know, what happened in your yesterday, uh, amen. Even if it happens again because you're new, guess what? God will equip you to handle it differently. Y'all not hearing me in here on today. Sometimes we'll sit and say, why, you know, um, what's the, it was a song, that old song, what is it, Charlie Brown, why is everybody always picking on me? Y'all remember that song? Some of y'all, y'all, some of y'all remember that? Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> y'all try to make me see, all right, the baby, even the baby is getting in on the laugh. <laughs> the baby say that those laugh, I guess it's cool for me to laugh, hey? <laughs> um, you know, it's some of us we can we can we we victimize ourselves. 
not realizing that you are a new creature and those situations, circumstances, and suits and skirts don't change, you have changed. And when you understand that you are a new creature, you handle things now in a new way. The way we process it, the way we respond to it, the way we react to it, the way we communicate or not communicate about it. Amen. You used to have three and four nights or a month of sleepless nights, but now you might have only had one night. You said, you know what, hey, why am I up? You know, listen, God, God has worked things out like this in my past. Man, I'm going to sleep. Amen. And you have to recognize these things about yourself because if you do not, you can't emotionally be in a downward spiral. But when you recognize these things about yourself, you're recognizing your growth in the Lord. And you need to celebrate every time you can see you're growing, amen, in God. Amen, somebody. Amen, bless his name. Let me take us further here tonight. Um, um, then you also, number five, you need to give, number four is know that you are a new creature. Know that you are a new creature, number four. Know that you are a new creature. Number four is know that you're a new creature. Number one, um, I share with you, don't hold on to what God delivered you from. Number two, I told you, don't dwell on the past. Number three, I share with you to place your trust in the Lord. Number four, I share with you, know that you are a new creature. Number five, give your cares to God. Give your cares to God. First Peter 5 and 17. Give your cares to God. That's, 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 a, that's a smorgasbord of, of possibilities um, as it pertains to when it says cares, a boatload of possible, what, whatever those cares may be that can cause your emotions to be up, down, all over the place, and all, you know, can, you know, say things are going haywire. Well, you don't want, you don't want to go haywire, you know. But what you have to learn how to do is tell God in prayer. Go to God and be honest with him. Talk to him. You know, some of us, we think that your prayers have to be like those prayers we used to hear the deacons of old used to sing. You know, God, here I am once again. Head bowed, knees, knees bent, head, body bowed. <laughs> Father, I'm coming to you, Lord, today. You don't have to pray like that. <laughs> Why are y'all laughing? <laughs> oh, y'all heard that prayer before? <laughs> Any of these brothers here that don't, they don't pray that prayer. Don't they? None of these brothers. <laughs> but no, you talk to God. God. God, I'm, I'm struggling. That's a care. I'm struggling. These people don't made me mad, made me upset. I'm struggling. No, I'm going to get that first Peter text. You got it? First Peter? Yeah, no, I'm going to get it. First Peter 5 and 17. Seven. seven, five and seven. I'm sorry. Five and seven. Yes, first Peter 5 and seven. I'll give you 17. I'm sorry. I sent it seven. I'm sorry. Sorry, five and seven. Excuse me. Uh, first Peter. Oh, that's why you gave it up. You're like, hey, ain't no 17. Well, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, that's one of those like when you have the um, when you have the uh, trivial questions and stuff, and people be searching and still searching, they still be searching. <laughs> yeah, but no, yes, five and seven. I'm sorry. Uh, first Peter five and seven. Give it, give it to us, and then and then and then I'll just expound a little bit on that. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Amen. And so. You are, you talk to God the same way as if, the same way I'm talking to you right now. That, that's, that's what prayer ultimately is. You're talking to God the same way I'm talking to you right now. You talk to him as, as though he is a human in flesh. And you're sharing with him when it says, cast your cares on him for he cares for you. So... You know, whatever the care is, it's, you know, God, listen, I'm struggling. Um, uh, God, I'm concerned. You know, God, I've lost sleep. I know you know. 
you know, God, I'm wearied, I'm, I'm, I'm broken hearted, I'm scared, you know, you, you, whatever those cares are, you just take them all and you cast them on him. The text says because he cares, because he cares for you. Um, even Jesus said, uh, he said, take my yoke upon you, upon you. He talks about because his burdens are, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest upon your burden. You got to learn to cast your cares on him and stop carrying all that stuff around. You, you got burdens from last year, you still carrying that load. You still carrying that load. Every, you look at cargo planes and cargo trucks, there's a, there are lessons in life that the Lord gives us, and yet we don't learn them and we don't practice them. They say they say that they say that uh, they say that camels who are are are, are, are and brother Deacons, you can get, begin to uh, take up our gifts. But, uh, they are the cur uh, ca camels are tra uh, traitorous uh, animals because they they are carry a load and carry a load in the desert. And you will never, ever know that they're tired. They'll carry it until they die. Just, just, just collapse boom, in, the middle, in the midst of whatever the journey that they're on. And, and sometimes we are like those camels, too. We just carry the burdens, carry the burdens, and the next thing you know, we just die. And it did not have to be as such. You learn how to cast your cares on him. Let me give you number six and number uh, six through eight, and then we'll and then we'll you know, have our announcements tonight. Num number six, you have to this one here. You have to release yourself from guilt. You got to release yourself from guilt. First John, uh, one and nineteen. Put that up on the screen there for us, and we'll read that together in unison. First John, one and nineteen. Um, um, I just was, I guess I was just typing in my own notes all, all over the place. Uh, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's, yeah, 1 John 1 and 9 uh, here on tonight. Uh, maybe these old eyes of mine. Let's read that all together here on this evening. If we confess, all right, so this, this is, this is, if, if you've done wrong, sometimes, sometimes you've done the wrong, and sometimes we can feel guilty from things that we've allowed to happen in our lives. But listen, we confess it. We confess it. You give it to the Lord, casting your cares on him, but also confessing to the Lord as well. Release yourself from whatever the guilt of your past. Um, and number, number seven, um, don't give room to the enemy. Don't give room to the enemy. Don't give room to the enemy. Sometimes we can't. Uh, let the past go. We can't leave the past in the past uh, because we've given so much room to the enemy. Uh, James chapter 4 and verse number 7. Can we get, get that up on the screen? James 4 and 7. Uh, let's read that together. Submit yourselves. Amen. I don't care what he says, what the enemy says, what negative things, negative voices that you hear that are whispering in your mind, negative thoughts, that is not of God. That is from the enemy. And so you got to resist him. Rebuke him in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to be walking around my house and have negative thoughts in my mind. I wouldn't care if it is my own voice. The devil is a liar. Rebuke him. Resist the negative thoughts. The text says when you resist him, he will flee. When you resist him, resist him and resist him, he will flee. And no longer will those negative thoughts be in your mind and in your head. Y'all hear what I'm saying here tonight? Yes. Lastly, lastly, y'all not going to like this one. Lastly, lastly, you must pray for your enemies. Lastly, you must pray for your enemies. Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 44. You're not going to love that one. You got to pray for your enemies. Pray for your enemies. You got to pray for your enemies. Um, let's, let's read that text. Uh, let's read that text here on together um, tonight as well. Pray for your enemies. Let's read that. But I tell you, love your enemies. 
and pray for those who persecute you. Amen. Amen. Let me bless these gifts, Father, in the name of Jesus. We are grateful to you for the givers of these gifts. We pray, God, that you would bless and show yourself to be God, that not a one person finds themselves lacking or begging for bread. Bless us as a church, God, to be a good and a faithful steward over everything that you place in our possession. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 So you have to pray for your enemies. Pray for your enemies. Pray for your enemies. Pray for your haters. Y'all love, love to lose, use that word. Pray for your haters. Pray for your haters. Pray for the spectators, the ones that got the, have the eyes on you. You know, pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Love them. Love your enemies, it says. And you don't like that. That's Bible. Pray for them. Love them. <laughs> One passage of scripture says, by doing so, you heaping coals. Yes, there you go. You want to you you get them right? <laughs> Pray for them. Love them. If you're going to heap coals of fire, you don't, you don't throw, no, don't throw rocks at them. Pray for them. <laughs> you're going to heap coals of fire on their head. Just be praying for them. And then don't be praying them prayers, you know, hunt them down, God. Knock them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I should have clarified that because some of y'all says, I, got, I have a prayer for them. I have one for them, all right. I, got, I have a prayer. I got one for them. You know, Lord, let, let a car just come and hit him and knock him off the road. We don't have cliffs in Miami, but God create a cliff and just let a bulldozer just come and push him on off the cliff. No, no, that's not what the text is encouraging us to do. Amen. <laughs> Pray they get peace in their life. You give me my chance, they, they, they just don't have no peace in their life. They get peace in their life, they, they don't have time. You, you ever notice when, you, when you're at peace? You don't have time to be worried about everyone and everything else. When God gives work to your hand, you don't have time to be all in somebody else's business. God, help them to be gainfully employed. <laughs> bless them, Lord. Bless them, God. Bless them and bless them indeed. And you, Lord, bless them indeed. They stop bothering you. And you can go on and keep on living your life and keep on having increase in the blessings of God manifesting in your life. Amen? Amen, 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 amen. Any questions or comments here on tonight uh, as we close this session? Number six, from guilt. Yes, from guilt. <laughs> yeah, release it from whatever, <laughs> whatever it is. Uh, guilt. Something committed by us, something committed towards us. We got to release ourselves from guilt, from guilt. Things we could have said, things we could have done, didn't do. Got to release ourselves from guilt. Any other questions or commentary here on tonight? Amen. All right, y'all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want to get the mic over there to you. Just to come in referencing not looking back, I tell people all the time, if you're walking forward, looking backwards, what will happen to you? Dr. Woodard just gave us a very practical and pragmatic uh, statement. I mean, it's the truth, y'all. You know, you try climbing upstairs, looking back. We don't look back at the steps we've climbed, you know. You know, even if you're going down, you don't look back at the steps that are behind you. You keep your eyes forward. Um, and so, too, is it with our past. You know, we, we leave that stuff behind us. Victories, um, as well as those challenges we've experienced in our past. You know, um, you, you, can, you can put yourself in a very miserable place, a uh, headspace, mentally, mentally. And so, and so we're talking this month about elevating your emotions, and then I'm excited about what's going to happen next month um, uh, because, you know, the focus, the focus is on um, elevating, elevating our minds, you know, with it being uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. And so there will be some things that we'll make sure that we uh, do by way of teaching. There will be some things that we'll do by way of, of uh, other professionals uh, sharing with us and other organizations uh, because it is, 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 it's to God 
the honest truth. You just can't come in here and uh, only focus on your spirituality and not your mentality. You, know, you, you can't. You know, you, you know they, the, the two have to be. The mind has to be whole. Spirit has to be whole. Emotions have to be whole, brothers and sisters. Uh, you know, because you'll come in here and you'll shout, but you'll leave right out the door and be filled with doubt. No. You know, they, they talk about let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Text talks about uh, uh, um, re by, by the renewing of your mind. You know, you know, li listen, no. We, and on next Wednesday, we're going to be praying, talk about victory, victory in the church. Brothers and sisters, you got, you got to have a, man, a victorious mindset. This is, this is a victorious mindset. I'm walking in victory. I'm living in victory, serving in victory. I'm worshiping in victory. You know, I am victorious. I don't care what situation knocks on my door, texts me, calls me, emails me. Guess what? I'm already victorious. That has to be in your mind in your mind, you know, I gotta tell my daughters that, no, 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 I say, hey, 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 get it together, get it together now, come on, now, now give it to me again, so they'll give it to me the same, I say, oh, no, 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 say, come on, give it to me one more time, dad, I'm trying, no, 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 listen, you coming to me asking me for advice, but in your asking, you're asking from a posture and place of defeat, say, we don't do that. We don't do that. Just tell me what the situation is and tell me what you've tried and then I'm going to tell you what I feel you should do. But we ain't you're not going to call me all defeated and beat up and whooped. Now, don't, don't cause me to get an airplane ticket for no reason at all. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> there's some stuff these hands can't fix. You know, only God can, can fix it. And 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 y'all no don't come calling defeated. We 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 operate from a place, amen, of victory. Amen? amen. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Listen, uh announcements we need to make announcements that we need to make here on tonight. Announcements that we need to make here on tonight. Uh amen. Any announcements, uh Brother Deacons, any announcements that we need to make tonight to have covered before the congregation here on tonight. Amen. And then we'll extend the invitation uh here on this evening. Just want, just want her, Pastor. We we want to keep uh, Sister Tracy Richardson in prayer. Uh, she, uh, I think her last name used to be Worry. She uh, had a stroke, so let's keep her and her family in prayer at this time. And also, we just want to remind her, everyone to save these dates: um, March fourth, not March fourth, uh, May fourth will be our youth celebration during the installation. And the week of uh, March, uh, May 18th, will be our, our young adults. Uh, we have something we plan in Pastor with the, that age group from 18 to 40. And then mark your calendar the week of uh, May 15th through the 19th will be a week of celebration uh, during the uh, installation service. So just mark your calendar. More announcements will be coming hopefully this Sunday. Amen. Thank you so much, Deke. Uh, our youth buses, we're trying to get that ministry back up and going. Uh, there's a meeting that's going to take place uh, next Thursday. What time is that meeting next Thursday? 7 p.m. next Thursday. Uh, amen. And so look forward for more details this Sunday uh, here in reference to our youth uh, ministry, youth ushers, rather. You've heard Deacon Gibson already talking about uh, keep Sister um, Tracy Richardson lifted up in prayer. Uh, we also uh, had word um, um, uh, Sister Murtis um, Carrigan, her sister, Sister Sharon Atkins, uh, had a uh, had to be admitted to the hospital. And so we're keeping her lifted um, in prayer. There are some other names that I did not write down, but I'll have them with me on Sunday that we will ask for you to keep lifted up in prayer. And so uh, sometimes uh, names don't get submitted, uh, but that's why you got to pray for everyone. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, 
Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Look at God. Look at God. Look at God. We were praying on Sunday. We were praying on Sunday and look at that. By Sunday we were praying and here we are Wednesday getting this positive report. Brothers and sisters, there's power in prayer. And uh, when we all come together and pray, um, you know, by chance one of our prayers will get through heaven and the Lord will hear and dispatch angels on our behalf. And so we praise God. Amen. For the power, for the power of prayer. We look forward to Sunday worship. The Lord blesses and lightens and lands. We have uh, souls to be baptized on Sunday. Amen. It's good to be a part of a church where the pool has not gone dry. Amen. I, I mean that. Some churches don't have pools. Other churches, they have pools and haven't baptized. But here we are. The Lord keeps sending souls and the pool has not gone dry. That is a blessing from the Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask that we would stand tonight. We want to extend the invitation to Christian discipleship because there may be someone here that is out of the ark of safety. Perhaps maybe may even be passing by. Some cars have come stumbling into the church house but don't know Jesus in the parting of their sins. We want to make sure that we leave here with a relationship with the Lord tonight. So mothers and fathers, sister and brother, this is your day, your hour, your chance. Make the most of this moment because all we have is right now. We don't have tomorrow. Yesterday is already gone. All we have is right now. If you're here tonight, would you come tonight? Would you come? Would you come? Come to Jesus. bless us as we depart. Father in heaven, thank you uh, for this time of, of diving into your word. God, give us the power to learn how to leave the past in the past, the successes as well as the struggles, to learn how to let go, God, so that we might live and enjoy the abundance of joy and freedom that you bring into our lives. Remember all of the sick, the shut-in that we've mentioned tonight and other names that we have not uh, said but yet stand in the need of prayer. Uh, remember us all, God, as we're the walking wounded. We look good on the outside but storms on the inside. Bless us, God, tonight with traveling grace to arrive to our destination safe and sound, finding things, God, in the good and the godly condition. And we will be ever careful and mindful to give your name, honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless each of you. Go in love, go in peace on tonight.